Fox Weather is your Hurricane HQ. Today marks the statistical peak of the Atlantic Basin hurricane season. You wouldn't necessarily know it. That was even more dramatic earlier today. Now we've got one area to watch on this map. No name storms. This is the day that it's most likely that there would be one existing, be it in the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean, or up into the Gulf. There is a reason, though, behind this lull, we think. We've got some clues. We're joined now by Dr. Ryan Truselet. Uh, he's the president and the chief meteorologist at Weather Tiger. Ryan, thanks so much for being here with us on Fox Weather. What do you make of this, what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, uh, the overall quiet conditions in the Atlantic? Well, thanks for having me. It certainly is unusual to have a September 10th where there are no named storms in the Atlantic Basin. And in fact, there's only been three times in the past 75 years where no named storms have developed between September 1st and September 15th, uh, which we're likely to do this year. Now, there's a couple things going on uh, that are responsible for this. I think the most notable one is that the atmosphere over the tropical Atlantic is simply more stable than it typically is at this time of year. That means that atmospheric uh, pieces of air aren't buoyant. They can't rise through the air and form convection over the tropical Atlantic, where we typically have it at this time of year. And without convection, you cannot get tropical cyclones, you can't get hurricanes. Uh, convection's the building block of tropical cyclones. So uh, you lack that, you really lack the potential for tropical development. And, and Ryan, I, I, I've been saying it this week because there, there's obvious uh, comps to what happened last year, the great lull of 2024. It appeared as though the reason for that had everything to do with what you were just explaining to us, the above average atmospheric stability in the tropical Atlantic. That shut down the MDR, but then uh, just a couple weeks from right now, we started to see some of these homegrown storms and eventually two majors in Helene and Milton. Are there any indicators moving through the second half of September as that part of the basin starts to get active uh, that we, we may see similar processes playing out? Yes, I certainly wouldn't draw any definite conclusions about the second half of hurricane season based on the first half. In fact, a lot of our modeling here at Weather Tiger indicated that it was likely to be a relatively benign first half of hurricane season. We were looking at fewer than 50 ACE units. Right now we're sitting around 40. But some of our metrics were indicating the potential for 70 or 80 ACE units in the back half of the season. And that's really because hurricane season is kind of a conglomerate of different flavors of, of places where storms form and where they move. And the Cape Verde season that we're used to, the kind of the classic hurricane track of your Andrews and Irma's forming in the Eastern Atlantic, moving across and then threatening the continental US from the East. You know, that's a, that's a flavor of hurricane risk that peaks in August and early September and really starts to fall off around September 20th. The type of risk, as you just mentioned, that picks up after September 20th are those more homegrown Central American gyre type of situations, uh, stalled fronts. It's a completely different mode and location of genesis. The focus of storm formation shifts back into the Gulf and into the Caribbean. I actually just developed a model uh, earlier today looking at what specifically causes uh, elevated activity in the Gulf and the Western Caribbean, areas west of 75 that are directly correlated with U.S. landfall risks after September 20th. Uh, and indeed, the metrics that are the most predictive actually do would indicate that uh, we're likely to have above average activity in the Gulf and Western Caribbean after September 20th. So keep in mind, in 2020, 2022, and 2024, two hurricanes made landfall in the continental United States after September 25th. So hurricane season is not over. Uh, we need to remain vigilant here along the Gulf Coast. Yeah, if there's any reason to back up why the, the vigilance moving forward is necessary, it's everything you just said. Almost 60% of storms occur after this calendar day, and in the short term, that has especially uh, been the case just in our recent history. That's the president and the chief meteorologist at Weather Tiger, Dr. Ryan Truselet. Uh, thanks for being with us on Fox Weather. We're going to check back with you. We certainly want to uh, follow up with some of those trends uh, later on this month.